Hello friends, welcome to our channel Knowledge Amplifier. So today in my this particular video, I am going to show you how we can do scoop operations in AWS EMR or Elastic Map Reduce. Okay, so for that I will simply search here in AWS Management Console. I will search for EMR and I will click on that and then here I will go to Create Cluster. Okay, so here it will open. So here we can go to advanced option and then here what are the things we can specify like for example we want spark, okay we want scoop, peak is there, hue is there, hive is there and hadoop is there, okay. Right, so here we can go to next, okay. So here no need to change that much anything rest of the parameter. So here we can go to next and then here it logs information and the stored cluster name. Let me give mine testing or scoop testing. We can give scoop testing. Okay, right. Click on next. Then here we have to choose the EC2 key pair which we want to give or which we want to use to open the EMR console. Okay, so I am going to use one particular already existing EC2 key pair. So here I am using this hippo data migration already present key pair and then I will simply click on create cluster okay and the cluster will start spinning up. So this cluster name is scoop testing. It is currently in starting status. When it will be in waiting status that means we are ready to use this particular one uh, EMR okay right right. Now let me give you some fundamental background of scoop. So as you know, scoop is widely used to transfer data in between RDBMS and HDFS. That's why it is named as scoop. That is SQL and Hadoop. That two together is generating scoop. Okay. So the generic syntax for scoop is nothing but scoop import. So scoop import to load the data from RDBMS to HDFS and scoop export is to uh, send the data from HDFS to RDBMS, right? So the generic uh, syntax is scoop import, then space hyphen hyphen connect, then space hyphen hyphen table, then space hyphen hyphen username, then space hyphen hyphen password, and then space hyphen hyphen target directory. So what are these arguments meaning? So scoop import is a common thing which will indicate that using scoop we want to import something from our RDBMS to HDFS. Okay. So if you just think that to connect with RDBMS, JDBC connection required, user ID required, password required, right? So this particular connect, this will contain or this will take the parameter which is JDBC URL and it will connect to that particular database. Okay. Then username. This is nothing but username to connect to database. Password is the password of that particular database system. Okay. Then table. What is this table? So suppose if you think that we want to transfer data from RDBMS to HDFS. In RDBMS, the data is stored as a tabular structure right in table. So that table name we have to specify. That's why in that table argument, the corresponding description I have written source table name to be imported. Okay. Now, when we do import from RDBMS to HDFS, we will put in some HDFS location. So, that particular HDFS location we can specify in target DIR. So, this particular target DIR is basically description is written. It imported data uh, will be loaded in this particular specific directory. So, scoop will import the whatever data present in RDBMS table in this particular specific directory. Okay. Present in HDFS location. Right. So, this is a generic syntax for scoop. You should always remember this. So, scoop import for importing data from RDBMS to HDFS, scoop export to send back the data from our uh, HDFS to RDBMS. Okay. So, when you are importing, what are the things required to make the connection in between RDBMS and HDFS to connect to RDBMS we require a, uh, that user ID, password, uh, okay and then JDBC string or JDBC URL, right? Then when we want to load the data, we need to put in some location that will come in target directly. Very simple to remember, complete logical, right? Okay. Now, 
let us check whether our cluster is pinned up or not by this time i will just make a refresh or maybe we can refresh here also so it is basically till starting state okay let it start okay till then let me discuss something more so here for this particular discussion purpose i am taking one particular rds system okay so i will open that rds using sql workbench and here if i just click on sql workbench it will try to open here you can see it is having that jdbc url username password already saved okay and this is a oracle uh, rds that's why driver is oracle or xml oracle jdbc oracle driver so if you are setting for the first time you have to go to manage driver and you have to make sure you are specifying that ogdbc6 jar which is required to make that connection okay right so we can make a, a connection by clicking on okay and i will make this bigger so this is the workspace where if we want we can write some query so these are the existing schemas okay maybe i can go to c schema and this table okay and here you can see that it will take some time to list down all the table names okay so if you see that these are the tables present in this particular c schema okay so for this particular discussion purpose i am taking a schema where small number of tables present that is sfmig okay i will just expand this table you can see here two tables present you can again click on plus and then here you can get columns information indexes or maybe uh, some other reference or something like for example let me show you uh, some amount of data so select star from so our this particular schema name is sfmigr so i will take it here sfmigr dot our table name is big table testing so i will just put it here okay and then here i will run this particular piece of code right so if the table is bigger size then it will take more time if the ta table is smaller then soon it will show as tabular structure in this particular part okay so this particular table is having more data that's why it is taking some time to load all the data right so let the data get loaded and let us check whether our emr is pinned up or not so i'll just make again one more refresh and still it is starting okay fine let it be the okay, data is keep on loading so i can maybe pause this one using this particular cancel button and it will try to show all this data okay so you can see that this is the table which we are having this is a very popular data set sepal length sepal with petal length petal width belonging to i this data set if you have worked uh, in machine learning or data science domain then i am sure that you might have encountered this particular data set okay so right now let me discuss the fundamentals of scope so today in our this particular video we are not going to import certain rdbms tables in our hdfs rather what i will do i will show you how to execute simple queries and get the result set okay in our emr okay once it is pinned up i will show you that so the scoop syntax is very simple to run any particular query so like here i told you scoop import and scoop export these are the two main functionalities of scoop apart from that if you want to run certain queries on database okay that is if you want to query your table that time you need to use eval okay eval is abbreviation of evaluate so i want to evaluate something and the query which you want to evaluate that you need to pass as hyphen hyphen query okay so here we are passing as table the table name we are passing with hyphen hyphen table similarly if you want to pass any query that time you can use hyphen hyphen query okay so the syntax is almost same less part like scoop eval because we want to evaluate some query then hyphen hyphen connect then here we are specifying the jdbc url using which we want to make the connection with our rdbms system then we are giving the username and password for our database and then we are passing the query which we want to execute in our database okay so select star from sf migr big table testing fetch next ten rows only that is basically nothing but we are limiting number of records to ten records only 
Like for example, I can show you here itself the same query I pasted and I will just simply run this particular query. What it will do, it will just show that top 10 records. Okay, right? So this is how it is working. So the same query we will execute using scoop. So this is the syntax. I hope it is clear to you. You understood. Just query is the argument which you have to pass. And connect is basically it takes the JDBC URL, username basically takes the username of that uh, RDBMS, password takes the password of that RDBMS for connection. Okay, right? Okay. So now let me just again refresh and check whether this EMR is pinned up or not. Okay, now see it is running. Okay, right? So if I go to cluster, you can see here scoop testing is running. Okay. So now maybe we can use this particular one. So it is now in waiting state. We are good to use. So master public DNS. So this particular DNS we will copy simply and then we will go to put team. Okay. To open it. And then here I will paste the host name. Then you remember we specified one uh, key pair for opening that EMR console. So I will just take that particular same key pair that is Hippo data migration, whatever key pair we specified during the launch of our EMR cluster. Okay. And then I will click on open. It will be opened. I have to click on yes and login as. So the login ID will be Hadoop by default as you know for this Unix system in EMR. And we are entered in this EMR. Okay. So if you don't, uh, if you keep this particular uh, putty as ideal for longer time, then it will be logged out. So to avoid that, I will go to change setting and then here I will go to connection instead of 0, I will make this as 5 and then I will apply. Okay, it will, no, it will not log out quickly if you keep it ideal then also. Okay, right. So I hope it is clear to you. So this is our Hadoop cluster here. We can run Spark, here we can run Hive, here we can run Scoop, whatever we want. Okay, right. So what I will do, I will simply just copy this particular piece of code to check whether our understanding is correct or not. So I just pasted this one and I will hit enter. So the result should be this particular one we should get in this particular console. But see, we are not getting that. What is the error? It is giving would not load the DB driver, Oracle JDBC Oracle driver. So this particular scoop is unable to find out the Oracle driver what I was talking initially, which SQL Workbench also required, right? So we need to provide this particular Oracle driver. So for that, you need to follow two steps. Step one, you need to first uh, download OJDBC 6 jar. So as already I have downloaded that, so I will just use that one. So I will use WinSCP to connect. So host name, what is the host name? Our host name is this particular DNS, right? So I will just copy this one and I will paste here. Username as I have used Hadoop, right? And what is the password? We don't have password. We have a key pair. So I will go to advanced and here I will go to authentication and I will choose my private key file. Okay. So here I will choose that private key file, whatever we have chosen for launching that uh, EMR. Okay. And I will click on yes. And this will lead me to WinSCP. Okay. And then what we will do we, to run this particular piece of code, we will basically uh, take the OJDBC 6 jar, whatever we have downloaded in our Windows, that we will shift from Windows to EMR and we will point to scope that use this particular driver. Okay. Right. So here this is this particular left hand side is our normal Windows desktop. This is our EMR. So I will go to root and from root I will go to MNT, from MNT I will go to var and inside this particular part we will put our OJDBC 6 jar which is required for this particular code. Okay, maybe we can go inside temp folder also, right and then here let me paste the OJDBC 6 jar. So you also follow the same thing, okay, just exact copy paste you do, CLD your code will run. So I will just copy paste this OJDBC 6 jar. So see it is copied. Okay. OJDBC 6 jar is copied. Now I need to say scoop that use this particular one. 
So for that, I will just execute this particular piece of code. Export Hadoop class path equal to MNT var then temp then OJDBC six jar because if you see our OJDBC six jar is present inside MNT var temp. Okay, so I will just execute this particular code. So the all the codes I will be providing in the description box or in the comment section so that you will not uh, you will no need to worry. Okay, we just simply copy paste. So now we can run this code and expectation is we should get the result. So let's hit enter and let's see see how beautifully Scoop is able to query our database which is one RDS this one whatever result we are getting here same result we are getting here also okay so this is how we are executing a simple SQL query let us go a little bit uh, more like for example I want to see what is the uh, column names data types data uh, each column is having how much length that time we in oracle we execute this kind of query let me show you in sql sql workbench first okay so this one if you see select column name data type and the length of the data from all tab columns so this is the name from where we get this kind of metadata information for a table where table name we are giving the table name as big table testing and owner, owner name as SFGR, MIGR. So table name is that particular table for which you want to get the information and owner, owner name will be basically our schema name for Oracle database. Okay. So I will run this particular one and you see that all the metadata information for the columns we are getting. So now let us run this particular same thing in our uh, EMR and check whether we are getting the same result or not. See the code is very simple. Eval for evaluate, connect using connect is required for giving JDBC URL username is required for username and password is required for giving the password of the RDBMS. And then we are just specifying whatever query we are running in RDS or RDBMS, same thing we are trying to run using scope. Okay. So here I will go to uh, put T and then here I will paste it. And I, here I will run. And you will see the same result, whatever metadata information for the individual columns we are getting in RDS, same thing we are getting here also. Okay, right? Now let us try to create one table. Maybe we can create one particular table, create table in that SFMIGR uh, schema only. Let me create one table called test, which is having two columns, which is having ID as integer and one uh, string column as fair care we are taking okay so if you check our current sql here only two tables big table testing and set or are present no such test table is present so what we'll do we'll just simply execute this particular piece of code in scoop using scoop and we should go back to our this particular uh, sql workbench and refresh this you will see that currently we are having in the tables part, we are having three tables. Test table also came. Okay, right? Now, if I do select star from SFMIGR dot test. Okay, so we just created the table. It is not like we have inserted data. So, we will get completely empty set. So, let us import one set of data. So, to give the insert simply execute one insert query insert into sfmigr dot our table name what we created is test right so here test values one comma so hum okay we will just simply copy this and we will execute here okay so it is executed and here now if you execute the same code select start from sfmigr dot test in our rds we will be getting id and name okay so today what we learned how to launch EMR cluster to work on scoop, what are the generic syntax for scoop, what is the importance of individual arguments with detailed description, how to give user requirement uh, specific uh, jar files, okay, and how to make scoop use that particular one, and how to run simple query using eval function present in scoop in our RDBMS and get the result set in the EMR console. Okay, so I hope you have enjoyed this. The complete code I'll be providing in the description box or in the comment section. If you find this video helpful, then please like, share, and comment. Subscribe my channel if you have not subscribed till now. And don't forget to press the bell icon to get the notification of my latest videos. 
थैंक यू फॉर वॉचिंग